Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I recent, uh, recently visited uh, for Umrah and I have some observation. So could you please tell me about this? I find that uh, over there a lot of uh, luxurious type of thing is been pushed up instead of uh, a very neat and clean environment. Like a lot of luxurious things, the hotel charge is fantastic, like 800 riyals per day, which any ordinary city in the world will not have that type of situation. So, Islamic, uh, is there any step taken to this extra the luxuries and all that? Because every Muslim has the right to go to this place. And uh, if the things are put to the right channel, uh, many people will take the advantage of this. Is there any concrete uh, attention is given to this issues? Because there is a lot of uh, extravagant expenses and other things which should be not there in a holy place like Mecca. And uh, even if you see uh, in India, there is a, in any other religion, they have a, this thing, Musafir Khana, or a place where people can say a normal, at very economical rates and all that. So why don't you put some uh, efforts to this? He was asked the question that when he went for Umrah, he found that the rates of per day staying hotel is very exorbitant. 800 yards, which is very high. Brother, let me tell you one thing. I do agree. The rates are only high during the season. During the month of Hajj, during Hajj period is very expensive and during the month of Ramadan. These two are the only times when the rates escalate. Well, that's the time when more pilgrims come to the holy city of Makkah and Medina. Otherwise, in off-season, it is one of the cheapest in the world. 800 riyal, what we're talking about the peak season. So the rates in hotels close to the Haram is one of the most expensive in the world and one of the cheapest in the world. 800 riyal is nothing. What we're talking about 800 riyal is about a five-star hotel. So 800 riyal comes to about 10,000 rupees. So if you take the rates of the five-star hotel close to the Haram, by the Makkah Medina, in off-season, it is the cheapest in the world. Cheapest in the world, I'm telling you that. You can even stay for 150 riyals. 2,000 rupees, no five-star hotel you'll get. Even for 1,000 rupees, off-season, 125 riyals, I'm telling you that. Five-star hotels. But in season, 2,000, 3,000 riyals, which becomes the most expensive in the world. Your question should have been Umrah, it should have been Hajj. Umrah is normally done in off-season. Except if you have Umrah during Ramadan. That time, during the last 10 days, it's sometimes even more expensive even than Hajj season. But during the other times of Umrah, it is very cheap. A poor person can even stay in a five-star hotel during off-season, if you want to do Umrah. Now, coming to your question, during Hajj season, why is it expensive? You fail to realize that according to me, after seeing the facility the Saudi government has given for Hajj, I'm saying because of the Saudi government, it is even possible for a very poor man to do Hajj. The facility the Saudi government gives, if you see the Harman, both the Harman, the facility they have, the toilets they have provided. Imagine more than 2 million people coming for Hajj at one time during Ramadan and the facility they have given toilet. They have put it in marble in toilet. Poor people don't get to live in it and marble. In toilet they have put it in marble. They have got escalators and they take only a few riyas. So as far as the airfare is concerned, number one, the government subsidized the airfare. Now because the Saudi government has subsidized the rate for the Saudi airlines, the other airlines for competition, they are forced to subsidize. So even the non-Muslim airlines are subsidizing now. Why? Because Saudi Arabia started that. So Saudi Arabia said that if you are coming for Umrah or for Hajj, we give 25% discount. Sometimes they give 40% discount. Now because Saudi airline does that, the other airlines are forced to do it. So they aren't bothered about the Muslims. But if they don't do, then they lose business. So they say prefer let the rate come down and we have more flights. So they subsidize. Actually they are making business. But if you normally have to go to Saudi Arabia, it will cost you 29,000 rupees. Normal fare up and down from Bombay. During Umrah and Hajj, it costs 21,000. Subsidized. One third. So first point number one, that fare is subsidized. Point number two, the facility given by government, the tax the government takes for Umrah is negligible, that's subsidized. As far as staying is concerned, eating is very cheap. Eating, you get all types of food, mashallah, very cheap. Pakistani food, this food, that food, fast food, everything. Now staying, what you are talking about the rates is the hotel is very close to the haram, harmain. Now if your budget doesn't provide you, you take a hotel which is far. I know even during Hajj season, there are hotels which are costing 50 riyas a day. So whether you are staying close to the harmain, whether five-star hotel or small hotel, even if you take close to the harmain, the cost of the land is expensive. 
the cost of land is expensive. So even if it's not a five-star hotel, it's expensive. If you stay in a hotel close to the Haram, even if it's not five-star, if it's not thousand, yeah, it will at least be four hundred years. You understand? Because the land is expensive. Now why the land is expensive? Because it's close to the Haram. So the moment a poor man when he goes, he can very well take a hotel which is half a kilometer away or one kilometer away. What's the problem? And the facility of the government is so good that you can spend the full day in Haram without any problem. So we should thank the facilities given by the government that it is even possible for a poor man to perform Hajj. Otherwise, if there was no facilities, only the air ticket, because now you can do Hajj even 50,000 rupees. You understand? So only the air ticket cost about 20 or 30,000 with the airport tax 30,000. It's because of the package. So if you go in a group, if you go as an individual, it will be expensive. If you have the money, Allah has given you the money, you can go as an individual, stay in a five-star. So there are trips going for Hajj for one month. So one month you're living, lodging, boarding, everything for 30,000 rupees is dirt cheap. 1,000 a day you're paying actually for traveling internal. Jeddah to Makkah to Medina and back. Where will you get? 1,000 a day. If you go to America and you want to spend 1,000 a day, when you go to the SOTC trips, they're so expensive. So if you compare that with the haram, for 30 days average you are spending less than 1,000 rupees. Sometimes you're spending 800 rupees, including traveling including eating, including staying in a good hotel close to the Haram. There are cheap tours which will cost you only hardly 600 rupees a day. Now 600 rupees a day for eating, staying and traveling is very cheap in a foreign country. It is mentioned in the Quran that when you are going for Hajj, when you are going for Hajj, you take some cloth in India which is not available there. You can very well take that cloth, sell it. And the government gives you permission. So while you are doing Hajj, many people do it free because they take stuff and they spend a few hours a day selling it and they recover the cost, people even make money. So that is no problem. So in Hajj, if you cannot afford it, you can even do business, you can take some material and sell it. Then many people do it. Many of the people, they get material. So these are the facilities given Allah SWT in the Quran and by the government have to appreciate. Now to say that why do they charge doesn't make sense. Even a poor man can go and there are more poor people coming for Hajj than rich people. More poor people are coming for Hajj from different parts of the world. They do the savings and Alhamdulillah, they have to thank. So all the types of facilities there in the Harmain, whether Makkah, Medina, big hotels are there, cheap hotels are there. There are Jamaat Khanas also. There's Bori Jamaat Khana, there are Aga Khani Jamaat Khana. There are several, so many Musafir Khanas are there. Now if you don't know about it, that's your problem. There are many Musafir Khana, not only in the Haram, even in cities. In Bombay, the Musafir Khana has come to going to the dogs. It's just lying weekend. Who's to blame? You are to blame. One thing is there that you have to realize that you go and tell the Saudi government, why did you put Italian marble in the toilet? And they want to give you free. So you should go and tell the Saudi government, why did you put Italian marble in the toilets? How many people live in Italian marbles? So Alhamdulillah, they want to serve the Haji because they feel that serving the Haji gives you barakah. Now when you do a trip from Jeddah to Medina and back, in the bus, they charge you 130 riyal, which is not possible. 150 riyal is only for going and coming. How is it possible? Then I inquired. They came to know there are many rich people who say that whatever the cost is, we'll pay half. So when you're paying 130 real, which for three days going to Madin and coming back with the air-conditioned bus, the normal bus fare when you go is 150 real. So how can they have 130? It doesn't make sense. So when I inquired, they told me that whatever the cost is, 50% is paid by rich people. They say we want to subsidize it. So if they want to subsidize it, why go in air-conditioned bus? But if the rich people, they want to spend their money in serving the hajis, alhamdulillah. So there's some rich man who is subsidizing. Some people come and tell me, you know, Ibn Qasir is so cheap, why it's expensive? Because the rich people in Ramadan, what they say, whatever the cost is, we'll pay half. So if the cost is approximately 8,000 rupees, or if it is 6,000 rupees, they say we'll pay half. So you get 3,000 rupees Ibn Qasir. It is subsidized by somebody. So when they want that, let the hajis get facilities, let the people who come for Ramadan get facilities. So why are you objecting? If you don't want it, don't take it. So you don't go in the tour, you can go individually. So the thing is that the facility given by the people out there, Alhamdulillah, because they respect the hajis, Alhamdulillah, we have to appreciate that. And we have to say that, MashaAllah, you can stay in a good hotel also, sometime at cheap rate. Sometime if you don't have the money, you can stay in a cheap house. Or if you have the money, you can stay in the season in expense mode. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, but... uh, like, uh, I think now of our court, our court yes. uh, yeah, but... he has uh, dedicated a building. Uh, and oh, and the people can go and stay of free course. down there. And I think uh, even Nizam of Hyderabad has done it. Maybe he He's not aware. He's aware. But adding more information, he's right. That Nizam of Hyderabad at that time, he used to give zakat to Saudi Arabia. No? Nizam of Hyderabad. They used to send zakat. 
they have to send money to Saudi Arabia and now it is the opposite. So they have got many of their own places to stay, which is free. But again, that's limited. So maybe the place, the room may be 50 or 100. So booking is there. So people are staying free. There are many people living now above Arkot of Madras. He has got his own place where people can go and stay there free. There is, even Abhuri Sayyidan has got, even Aga Khan has got. There are many trusts which have got. And they think it's free. Some people charge nominal. So depending upon if you want to get avail, that's the reason so many poor people can also perform as Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Hope that answers the question.